Welcome to 7 Star Fitness. I'm Keegan, and this is the Deep Dive. Now, for those of y'all who have been here before, this is a YouTube series where I go somewhere on the internet and look deep into the comments thread to find a comment or question that I feel could use some sort of answer, and then I go about answering it using my 12 plus years experience in the fitness industry. Uh, the last time I did it, it uh, it was a bit long. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, 36 minutes is, is a bit much, uh, but I, I got a handle on it this time. We're gonna make sure we don't go way over time like we did the last time, so I got this. All right, so uh, today we are gonna go back to Reddit just like we did last time, and we're gonna find ourselves a question. And unlike last time, I also feel like this time we can go deeper. I think last time was a bit on the shallow side in terms of the dive. Forgive me, it was the maiden voyage, you know? Just getting started out, you know? I, I gotta start somewhere. So this time, we're gonna go real deep. We're gonna go right to the bottom if I can find it. So we're heading back into our fitness. We're gonna find the Moronic Monday thread and we're gonna get right on into it. So let's do this. Monday. Let's see, we're just gonna go all the way down to the bottom. We've hit rock bottom. All right, so let's uh, start reading some of these questions. Ah, oh, did I do a disclaimer? This isn't medical advice. Don't treat this as medical advice. I'm not your doctor, all right? I'm just a personal trainer giving you personal training advice. That's it, okay? Cool, I feel like that covers it. Probably doesn't cover it. You know what, this is this is probably worth tackling to some degree. All right, so uh, this one comes in from Professor Hot Dogs. Um, so Professor Hot Dogs, his, his or her, their main issue uh, is that they are trying to A, stay safe and kind of have some sort of etiquette as far as times are concerned. Um, B, they're also trying to build back muscle fast. Um, uh, so this is due to the fact that when the gyms closed down, they likely didn't have a lot of equipment they could rely on in order to do resistance training at home. Uh, and then what happened is they ended up resorting to cardio based workouts like running and walking and the like uh, that they could easily do outside, which allowed them to still see some sort of results and keep themselves active, but it sacrificed a lot of their muscle mass in the process. Um, okay. So, um, here is what I would probably say to that. As far as post lockdown and new uh, restrictions and the like, one, keep your distance. I mean, two meters, six feet. Uh, uh, so that's that's one thing you could definitely do, which is, is always positive. Two, um, if the gym requires you to, and if they ask you to, and if it's part of their rules, wear a mask i said this in the last video just wear a mask if it's part of the rules and wear it properly so over your nose and your mouth and your chin as is directed by all well, the official documents and, and and advice from the official parties like the who and and all those people so make sure you wipe down all your equipment um don't touch your face too often when you're outside a lot of this is just the guidelines that you see from from official bodies um cdc who all that sort of stuff keep your mask on if you're gonna take your mask off for any reason whatsoever try to do so with clean hands so bringing hand sanitizer with you can be helpful uh, i always have one in uh in my pockets uh if i should so happen to be leaving the house so it's always helpful to have that there in case for whatever reason you do need to take your mask off at least when you're reaching towards your face you're doing so with hands that are cleaner somewhat clean uh which is is, is not a bad thing to do for sure it keeps you safe keeps you healthy you know it lowers the risk of you catching anything while you're outside building back muscle fast um now as far as the speed at which one can rebuild muscle uh there's only so much you can do uh there's only so far you can really go and it, you kind of have to appreciate the fact that it's going to take some time you'll probably gain back a lot of your muscle a little bit faster than when you gained it the first time uh, the sort of theories on muscle memory sort of dictate to some extent that there'll be an increased speed uh at which you will be able to regain that muscle which is nice um but there's no shortcut to it be consistent use science-based evidence-based methodologies for your program design and your exercise choices uh, and just be consistent about it eat well that'll help a lot um, make sure that you're you're intaking the necessary nutrients to see proper muscle gain uh, and yeah just be patient with it i mean 
you spent the time to get it the first time. No sense in rushing it to get it the second time. Uh, rushing it often leads to making reckless decisions and mistakes, which can lead to injury and, uh, and other things like that that can either stall out your progress or just completely kill it you know, right then and there. So uh, much better to be safe, consistent, you know, manageable, and, and that'll be a much better way of going about things in the long run. Um, so yeah, good luck, Professor Hot Dogs. Uh, I know this has been a trying time for a lot of us lifters out there and a lot of people who are looking to see, you know, mass gains and aren't exactly in a situation where at home we could set up equipment or even purchase equipment that would allow us to have a really solid workout like we did at the gyms at home. Um, but as things ease up and as we get vaccinated, as we get closer to a point where things are some version of normal, hopefully we'll be able to start kind of slowly getting these things back. So my best to you, buddy. Good luck. Here's hoping you can get that 15 to 20 pounds of muscle back ASAP. Um, let's see what else we got. The Gussie Boy says, I'm noticing that during core exercises, specifically bicycle crunches uh, and bent over barbell rows, that I'm experiencing lower back strain as though I'm using my back to compensate. The weight loads uh, in doing... Is that the weight loads in doing are still pretty minor since I'm just getting oh the weight loads I'm doing are still pretty minor since I'm just getting back into working out and I always make sure to brace my core any advice it's amazing how a typo can throw off your ability to read a question or read something it's 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 really amazing how the human brain works um, if I try to think my way through this here's some of the stuff that pops off at the top of my head um, when it comes to something like a bent over barbell row, your lower back is kind of going to be part of this whole process. I mean, when you talk about kind of hinging at the hip a little bit, you're gonna have your lower back is, is kind of just part of what braces you in that position. That's kind of something that's not really a huge concern, something I'm thinking about too much, just because the when doing core exercises, specifically bicycle crunches, when that comes in, it completely throws off the direction I'm looking at this from now. Um, if you're noticing that when you're trying to do something that activates your core, your back feels strained, there's a decent chance that you have an overactive erector spinae. So erector spinae is the lower back muscle, basically. Uh, it's the muscle that runs right along the side of, uh, right next to the side of your, your spine there. Um, and a lot of people, when they say they feel lower back pain, usually they're referring to the erector spinae. So it's entirely possible that you have an overactive lower back. And if you have an overactive lower back, that would mean that it is extremely tight and just generally more tight than it should be. Uh, if that's the case, then what you might experience when you try to activate your core is usually there's supposed to be a signal sent to the opposing muscle group, in this case, opposing to the core and lower back, uh, as they sort of sit on opposite sides of each other. When the core try to, tries to activate, there's a signal sent to the lower back telling it to sort of open up to, to relax. Uh, and as that happens, it gives room for the core to sort of uh, contract more. And this is part of the reason, uh, part of the reason for that is because there's a relationship happening there. Uh, as far as the pelvis is concerned and pelvic tilt uh, one way or the other anterior or posterior um, is sort of decided um, in part by which one of these bad boys is active and so uh, as you activate your core you're drawing your pelvis closer towards your rib cage and so there's a, a tilt happening and it's a posterior tilt and your lower back has to open up and extend in order to allow that to happen but if you are experiencing strain when you're doing back exercises and if your lower back is overactive and so tight like i'm uh, sort of supposing and theorizing it might be when you go to activate your core as you try to do that and the signal's being sent to the lower back to relax it's super tight it doesn't really know how to so this is trying to pull and as it tries to pull it's trying to get some sort of ease from this opposite side but it can't and so as your pelvis tilts and your core is trying to activate it's pulling on a really tight muscle causing that straining feeling um so we if that's the case we know what it is now the how of dealing with it pretty simply um is i would go about um 
stretching. Uh, I mean, one of the things that's pretty typical for a lot of people is a really tight posterior chain. So basically, all the muscles running along the back side of your body uh, being really tight. And that's because a lot of people neglect stretching, uh, especially as far as the sort of glutes, hamstrings, calves, uh, rectus spinae are concerned. They're very typical culprits of just being ignored, especially by people who are, you know, active professionals living busy lives. You forget about it because you're working and whatnot, and they just get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter because, you know, they've been put in shortened positions for extended periods of time and they don't get time to like open up and stay and get long and, and really balance out. And so they get tighter, they get tighter, and they start to cause dysfunction and problems. Um, so um, stretch out that lower back, um, stretch it, roll it. Rolling really will just help bring blood to the area for the most part, but the stretching will help really open up the muscle. Um, don't stretch hard on it. Uh, you definitely, if you're warmed up, stretch to maybe about 75% of your maximum stretch, um, but take it easy on it and slowly open it up. Um, this is not going to be something that you do once a week and see results in any considerable period of time. You're going to need to do this like every day for a while. So the gussy boy, better get to stretching, bruv. Toe touches, they're gonna be your friend for a while. Standing toe touches, seated toe touches. Uh, there's a number of other lower back stretches you can do, but like get on stretching and that will help considerably because as you open up that lower back and it kind of gives way, you'll have a lot more control over what happens in your core. There's a decent chance that also the core exercises you're doing, you're not getting the full benefit of because the overactive lower back is causing a restriction in movement, making it impossible for you to really bring your rib cage closer to your pelvis and getting the full contraction out of uh, rectus abdominis, your abs. So for the sake of you know proper function and progress for you in the long run, stretch, guys, boy, stretch. Let's go. Um, well, uh, I think that's going to basically do it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys found this informative. I hope you found it useful. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed this being a lot less than 36 minutes. I know I did, and I know I'm going to really appreciate this when I'm editing too. So just happiness all around for everybody. Um, if you haven't already joined the galaxy and the galaxy is all of us stars here out here just trying to do our best and get our workouts in learn more and progress as athletes and individuals then go ahead and like and subscribe down on the bottom there um, and of course hit the bell to make sure that you get notified of all the videos I got coming in the future uh, I'll be doing this probably like once every week or so uh, so stay tuned for the next video um, of course if you got any questions or comments about the video go ahead throw that in the comments below I'm gonna throw all my social media links into the description down underneath the video uh, so take a look at that follow me on Instagram follow me on Facebook you know this is my personal one so go ahead come through chat and be happy to see you um, and uh, of course uh, as always stay shining because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together Peace.